Today we're going to be talking about time signatures. It's lesson seven, three, four, time signature. The objective is to clap and tap the rhythms below using rhythm words, counts, and subdivisions. So here's the time signature we're going to first look at is three, four. Time signature standard definition. The standard definition of a time signature is the top number signifies the number of beats in a measure. So if you see the number three, there's three beats in a measure. If you see the number five, there's five beats in a measure. The bottom one here, the bottom number is what signifies the kind of note that gets the beat. So if this is a four, that means the quarter note will get the beat. If the bottom number is confusing to you, um, you could think of it as uh, this way. The top number, every measure will receive three beats. Okay, so a measure will get one, two, three, and the next measure will get one, two, three. Notice that there's only three beats per measure, so I'm not saying the number four. All right, the bottom here, think of it as a quarter note. The quarter note will get a beat. So think of this number four as a fraction. So now the quarter note will get a beat. To help your understanding, let's look at a few examples of time signature. So if you look over here, it says there's four beats in a measure. You could think of it as one, two, three, four. And I'm using hearts because a heart is a steady pulse, right? One, two, three, four. Next measure, one, two, three, four. The number four actually stands for, I mean the bottom, the number four actually stands for uh, one fourth. So a quarter note will actually receive a full beat or a full count, okay? One, two, three, four. So we're counting quarter notes as the beat, all right? If we were counting, I don't know, dongles, then we have to count one dongle, two dongles, three dongles, four dongles, right? Counting pens, one, two, three, four. So it just depends on uh, the bottom The bottom number here in time signature, again, is what gets the count. Here, it's going to be a quarter note. All right, so here's an application. You can see it says one, two, three, four. And because a quarter note gets a beat, that means an eighth note, which is half of a quarter note, will only get half a beat. So two eighth notes would be one and, two and, three and, four and, okay? So in a pair of eighth notes, the first eighth note gets the assigned, um, gets assigned the first half of the beat, all right, which is the number one. And the second eighth note gets assigned the second half of the beat, which is the number, which is the letter and, okay? So here's the first eighth note, one, the second one gets and. First one gets two, next one gets and, et cetera, et cetera. All right, next, three, four time signature, top and bottom number, all right, in three, four, like we said, the top number is how many beats there are in a measure. Now there's only three beats per measure. One, two, three, right? Here, the bottom number is still four, so we still know that the quarter note will get the count. One, two, three, okay? Um, in application, one, two, three for quarter notes. We know that eighth notes are half of a quarter note, so we're gonna split the beat in half. So this will get one and, two and, three and. All right, here's another way to look at it. Um, if a quarter note gets one beat, then a single eighth note will only receive half a beat. Why? Because an eighth note is half the length of a quarter note. And here it is, you can see, as far as lines are concerned, here's a quarter note. You'll see an eighth note only gets half of that length. Same thing with two, four time signature, right? The top number gets two beats, right, in a measure. So this gets one, two. The next measure will get one, two. Next measure gets one, two. Notice I'm not saying three, I'm not saying four, because there's no three or four, right? There's only two beats per measure. In application, quarter note, we get one, two, and the eighth notes would be one, and, two, and, all right? Mathematically speaking, here's another way to look at it. Half a quarter note is an eighth, all right? So here's a quarter note, and if you were to cut it up, you get an eighth. Why? Because a quarter note, right, when cut in half, now you have eight pieces in a whole, right? So one eighth, all right? Next, time signature review. So based on our last few examples, this is how we arrive at the standard definition for time signature. All right, the top number, again, signifies the number of beats per measure. The bottom number is signifies the kind of note that gets the beat. So if the bottom number is still confusing to you, you could think of time signature this way, all right? Just a reminder, in here, every measure will receive three beats. The bottom one, the quarter note, will receive um, the beat. So let's look over here. Write the time signature for each measure in the boxes below. So what you need to do is you need to look at this measure and I need you to count how many beats are in each measure. All right, and then you're gonna write the time signature next to it. So the first one.
Correct, it's three, four, right? Because it's one, two, three beats of the measure. One, two, three beats of the measure. One, two, three beats of the measure. So the top number has to be the number three, all right? And then the quarter note is the one that's getting the beat, so we're just gonna put four. You really don't need to worry about the bottom number for right now. It's not until you get to more advanced music where it changes. All right, let's look at question number two. What is the time signature for that? Correct, it's two, four. Why? Because it's one, two. The next measure is one, two. The next measure is one, two. The next measure is one, two. All right, and the last one. It's five, four. Why? Because there's one, two, three, four, five. The next measure you say the counts one, two, three, four, five. So there's five beats per measure. All right, so hopefully that makes more sense to you. And I know that was a lot of different ways to explain it, but uh, everyone's brain thinks differently. And I've definitely experienced many students that uh, one explanation makes sense to them and the other one doesn't. All right, so using rhythm words, we're going to be looking at these in class. Uh, this is starts off pretty easy, right? These are just quarter notes with rests, but it will eventually start getting more complicated with eighth notes and dotted half notes. So it starts mixing them up. So I need you to like get the quarter notes down really solid first, because once we start doing eighth notes, you really have to have a deeper understanding of subdivisions and how they fit in the time signature. All right, wish you luck.